Solskjaer was never the man who was going to take United back up to the top to challenge Liverpool and City. But it's obvious that he's not a good enough coach for this United team. 12 months ago, after 17 games in the Premier League, Manchester United was sixth and we were 24 points behind Liverpool. Now, after 17 games this season, we're three points ahead of Liverpool at the top of the Premier League. And I could not be happier to have egg on my face because I wobbled hard about Solskjaer last January, as you saw in that video there. And I think it's time that I called myself out on the opinions that I had 12 months ago and how they've changed so much because they really have changed. The last 12 months, I would never have expected in a million years. And if we're being honest, so many of us have had wobbles. Not many of us have outright called for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to be sacked and trying to throw him under the bus. But we've all wobbled and I think that's completely natural. But you've also got to put your hands up at this point and say, look, I think we were probably wrong. And that's what I want to do in this video. So make sure you subscribe if you're new. Make sure you drop a like on the video. And make sure you get your own opinions in the comments because I think this is a very important video to do. As I said, I wobbled hardest about Solskjaer last January after we lost to Burnley at home. This was pre-Bruno Fernandes. United were down in the dumps. Old Trafford was emptying before full time. It, it seemed like progress was impossible at that point. And Bruno Fernandes obviously changed everything. But I remember at that time, Mauricio Pochettino was the man who I felt was the correct man to come into the club. And this is what I said about Poch and Solskjaer at the time. My opinion, I want to see United get Pochettino to sign that deal this week. Announce it immediately. But bring Pochettino in in the summer. Start planning with him now. Now, I absolutely stand by the opinion that I had there. Because pre-Bruno Fernandes, that would have been a smart decision by Manchester United to plan for Poch in the summer. Obviously, we didn't. And then Bruno happened. And Bruno Fernandes, it really, it really cannot be understated how much of a transformative influence one single player has had on this whole Manchester United team and squad and club. Fernandes has been nothing short of incredible. Easily the best signing that we've made post-Fergie. Easily the best signing that's happened in the Premier League in the last few years. For him to be able to transform a club of United sides in such a short space of time and their mentality switch has been incredible. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been the enabler of that. We should have got him in the summer rather than January. Maybe this would have been a conversation we had a few months earlier, but we didn't. And United didn't. But since then, Bruno Fernandes has changed United's fortunes. And Solskjaer, the progress that we've been making under Solskjaer, because pre-Bruno Fernandes, it, we had plenty of little signs of of progress under Solskjaer. He was getting rid of the right players, the likes of Fellaini and Damian and, and Young and Lukaku. Obviously, not all of that was pre-Bruno. But everything seemed to be happening in individual parts. Some were correct, some were wrong. That's why it was always one step forward and two steps backwards. But Bruno was the man who came in and made it all head in the right direction. And it enabled us to get to this point where we're at now. But still, regardless of, of how much of a difference, a positive influence that Bruno has had, I said this after the summer, in which I felt, I still felt that Solskjaer sacking was inevitable. This summer was the chance to get the reinforcements in to push for that top two. But no Sancho, no defensive midfielder, no centre-back, no progress. And for me now, Solskjaer being sacked is more than, it feels like an inevitability. We've seen it before and we're seeing it again. And this summer was the chance to change that. But I don't think we have and I don't think we will. And again, I still stand by the opinion that I had there after the summer because no Sancho, no centre-back, no defensive midfielder. For me, it seemed like United were throwing Solskjaer under the bus and not giving him the tools he needed to compete with Liverpool and City this year because he was not given that. Which makes what's happening at the moment all the more brilliant to watch because... Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is overachieving, I think, with the squad that he has. Now, this squad is brilliant in points. I will definitely say that. But I don't think that defence is good enough to win the Premier League. And I think, ultimately, that's probably what will happen. I think no United fan is expecting United now to go on to win the league. It's just that we are in a title race in a season where we did not expect to be.
this season, the progress would have been competing for that top two, really closing that gap. Because as I said, at this point last year, we were 24 points behind Liverpool. That's a 30, well, a 27-point swing, potential 30-point swing if we beat Liverpool at Anfield at the weekend. That is a huge, huge amount of progress. And I've got egg on my face. And I have to admit it. And we all have to admit it. As I said, it's perfectly natural to have wobbles about managers, about players. It's what football's all about. Weekend to weekend, opinions can shift and opinions can change. But it's only right to call yourselves out on those opinions if, if you're wrong about them, if you're going to gloat about it when you're right. And I was wrong to really label Solskjaer the PE teacher that everybody, I suppose, maybe believe that he was. Because for a PE teacher, he's built a squad and a team that's better than anything that Louis van Gaal built. A man who's got a littered, littered CV. Jose Mourinho. He's built a better squad than Mourinho, a man who is considered one of the best modern day coaches. No team has picked up more points in the last 12 months than Manchester United in the Premier League. And it's not a flash in the pan. It's not a result here and a result there. Consistently over the last 12 months, no team has more points than Manchester United. And that is huge, huge progress. And what we're seeing now, take that game against Burnley. It was a game where the pressures on these United players are different pressures than what they've had previously. We've always been chasing, chasing, chasing. All of a sudden, we're sitting on top of the pile and the pressure is people trying to push upwards and us trying to hold them down rather than us trying to chase, 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 which I've always thought suited Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But against Burnley, we saw United dig in, fight, go for it. Pogba playing brilliantly, even when Bruno had a slightly muted game. And that has to be down to the coaching. And it's something that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer deserves huge, huge credit for. And I've got no idea what's going to happen next. And some of you might say that this video is premature given that we're playing Liverpool at the weekend and Liverpool a week after. But for me, those results do not matter. Losing to Liverpool at Anfield will not change this feeling I have now of the progress that we have made. Because it won't. One individual result there against Liverpool won't shift that narrative. Of course, in the immediate aftermath of it, it will. But in reality, it doesn't. And it won't. We're, we're back up there at the top of the league. We are competing with the best teams in the league. Leicester had a perfect storm. Why can't United have that storm? The opportunity is there for us to take advantage of that storm. And that's what United have been doing for some time. And that's what we have to continue to do. And so much of it. Look, if, if you can blame a manager for when a team is playing badly, you have to credit a manager when a team is playing very well. And that's what United have been doing for so Long and I'm just so happy to be proven wrong about Solskjaer because I've always, I always thought that Solskjaer was, was the man who improved United, built foundations, but then set it up ultimately for some another manager to follow and succeed. He's completely exceeded my expectations in that regard. He has United playing right now like a title challenging team, like a team who's not only there by luck but is there on merit. And deserves to be there. Deserves to be up at the top. And deserves to be considered title challengers. And we do absolutely deserve it. And as I said, if you can if you can slam Solskjaer for some of the terrible performances. And we've seen plenty of those. You have to credit Solskjaer when the great performances happen. And the overall progress that we've seen. And for me, ultimately, the most important thing here is this is against the odds. It's a bit like Fergie. You looked at some of those teams that Fergie had and you're thinking, how the hell did he win the league with that? But Fergie did it. Fergie got more out of his players than most people expected him to. And it's something that I've seen Solskjaer do over the last 12 months. Because yes, our squad is world class in certain positions and certain points, but it's not a world class. City's squad and team is so much better still. Liverpool's squad and team is so much better still. And I think United are overachieving and that has to come down to the management. Now, maybe I'll look back on this video in another few months time and I'll call myself out again, but I don't think I will. This, this feeling, is, this feeling is, has been brewing for a long time and United fans have always sort of held back because we, we, it's never good to talk too early. But 12 months on from that defeat to Burnley to where we are now, the progress between those two points has been absolutely sensational. Bruno Fernandes has been the driver 
But Solskjaer's been the captain. Solskjaer's been the manager that has, has enabled it all to happen. And I can't wait to see what happens next. Ultimately, I'm expecting City to win the league. But I didn't expect United to be top of the league at this point in January. I didn't expect to go to Anfield with the opportunity to be six points ahead of Liverpool. And there's so many things that have happened in the last year that I just have not expected. So I would not be surprised by anything else that 2021 wants to throw at us in the Premier League. But I just felt this video was important for me to sort of reflect on the opinions that I had 12 months ago because we've all got opinions. It's just that mine are on video and people can bring them up. So I wanted to bring them up first because I think it's important to look at what, what I felt was a correct opinion back then and just how much progress United have made since then to make that opinion null and void. I mean, it's the beauty of opinions. You can't be right or wrong. It's just how you personally feel. But I f personally feel that <laughs> I'm so happy to have egg on my face because there cannot be a better feeling in football than watching one of your favourite ever players who's a true, proper legend of your club against the odds, against the tide of people that want him to fail, succeed and do it so well that we're above Liverpool before we go to Anfield. I mean, come on. That's a hell of a bit of progress for 12 months and it's the first time in seven years that we've been top of the league post-January. That is huge progress. Let's see what happens between now and the end of the year. As I said, I personally expect Liverpool, not Liverpool, sorry, I expect City to win the league. I think they've got the better squad, they've got the mentality for it. But United have surprised me so much over the last 12 months. I hope they surprise me in the next five months as well. Let me know what your opinion on Solskjaer and how you feel it's changed over the last 12 months. I hesitate to say a lot of you will be in the same boat as me. I, I like to think that I've been pretty fair with my opinions on Solskjaer and I like to think I've been pretty open when I've really wobbled about him. And that's why I'm being open and honest here when I'm saying I was wrong. I was absolutely wrong and I can't wait to see what comes next.